Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ayyuhal habibu fillah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq bless us with ikhlas with the bad Allah sunnah the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins and bless the muslims everywhere forgive the muslims everywhere guide the muslims everywhere ya rabbil alamin and guide the non muslims to islam because we don't want to see anyone in the hellfire we want everyone to be guided especially from our families and our friends and our clans and our our tribes and our peoples may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all to what pleases him amin ya rabbil alamin qal imam muqbil bin hadi al wadi allah yarhamuhu fi in his his treaties hadi dawatana wa aqidatana we've reached the last portion of the treaties and the sheikh was talking about the hukuma hukumat the government in the issue of khuruj or uh, rebelling against the muslim leader we spoke about this countless times in many of our durus and sittings and if you type in uh the uh about videos about rulership and going against the government and uh ruling by what Allah has uh, ruling by other than what Allah has revealed on this channel you'll find uh an exploration of those topics in extensive details the sheikh said rahmatullahi alayhi he said al hukumat نحبها بقدر ما فيها من الخير ونبغضها لما فيها من الشر ولا نجيز الخروج عليها الا ان نرى الكفر بواح عندنا فيه من الله برهان بشرط ان نكون قادرين والا تكون المعركه بين المسلمين من الجانبين فان الحكام يصورون الخارجين عليهم بصورة المخربين المفسدين وثمة شروط تراجع من كتبنا الأخرى وأبغض حكومات لدينا حكومة عدن الشيوعية الملحدة عجل الله بزوالها وطهر البلاد الإسلامية منها الشيخ سير uh rahmatullahi alayhi he was talking about especially in the context of his time and at that time probably the time of writing this treaties in the south of yemen uh in aden it was ruled in hadramaut in the south it was ruled by communists so the sheikh made a dua at the end saying may allah speedily remove uh the those communists those those uh atheistic communists uh from the and purify the land of the muslims from them so the sheikh said uh rahmatullahi he said in the governments we love them in accordance with the good that they do and we hate them with in accordance with the evil that they do and we do not make it permissible to rebel against them unless there is open disbelief that's indisputable uh given to us uh from Allah clearly with the condition that it does not uh cause those people who uh have uh the ability to that it will not cause a a war between the muslims uh from in both parties and that the government uh will have the ability to paint the picture that these people rebelling against them uh are wicked um wicked people who destroy who only destroy things and cause destruction and for the rest of these conditions go back to our other books and we detest the government uh of Aden the communist government of Aden uh the, the agnostic communist government and then the rest is the dua that we already mentioned so this is very important because although this was in the context of the sheikh's time 
It shows you this important kaida, this principle of ahlusunati with jama'ah, of not rebelling against the Muslim ruler and authority, and the harms and the wickedness that results in that, even if the Muslim is, even if the authority is a wicked, fasic, shaitaniya ruler, but is still in the fold of Islam, that, as the Prophet wasallam said, أَسَمْعِ وَطَالَ مَرَيَ الْمُسْلِمْ مَا لَمْ يُؤْمِرُ بِمَعْسِيَةٍ فِي ذَا أُمِّرُ بِمَعْسِيَةٍ فَلَا سَمْعَ وَلَا طَعَ The Prophet wasallam said, uh, listen, hear it and obey the ruler in that which, uh, in that which you love and that which you hate, as long as they don't order you to do sinfulness. And if they order you to do sinfulness, then there's no hearing and obeying in that command. And the Prophet wasallam said uh, about the, uh, uh, in, in, in many ahadith that you'll find in Sahih Muslim, about not rebelling against the ruler, and that uh, to hear and obey the ruler, and even if he would, in one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, even if he uh, beat, took your wealth and beat your backs, that you should uh, obey the leader. So that shows us the makana or the manzil or the place, the level and status of the Muslim ruler, as long as he's still a Muslim, in the Muslim lands. And likewise, we also learn from this that even if he is a wicked facet, that you should not rebel against him. And what's very relevant for us, look at Syria. Syria is a perfect example of what we, what we have today and the onslaught of ISIS and other groups. We see that through rebellion, which started off as just some protest, and that, that wicked, devilish government. So this is here was a, a government that was a disbelieving government, a Kafir government. Uh, that of Bashar of Assad. He was not a Muslim. He's not a Muslim. And his government, his babah. But because they didn't have the ability, it would have been better for those people. Ahl Sunnah did not encourage them. The scholars of Ahl Sunnah did not encourage the people to protest and then for it to lead to what it led to. Because knowing well that they didn't have the ability to overturn and overthrow a ruler like this, and that a ruler like this would react to something simple as protest with extreme brutality and cruelty and the slaughtering of women and children and the elders and the elderly and the religious people of all faiths, that they would be very heavy-handed in suppressing any sort of opposition or uh, threat to their authority. And this is exactly what happens. And to this very day, when now the Syrian conflict is in probably what, it's almost its third year or something, just constant bloodshed. Look at Iraq, look at Afghanistan. Those are other classic examples. Somalia, classic examples of places, Muslim lands, that were, are, are, are stained with the blood of Muslims mainly, and others, but especially the, the blood of Muslims. So Muslims don't benefit from rebelling against even disbelieving rulers or wicked rulers. Either one, the, the result is the same. So if there is no maslaha in that, then why would you do that? Why would you encourage rebellion and striving to usurp authority and the killing at the expense of your, your society, at the expense of the, the future of your children and having institutions to uh, develop your society, to having businesses, to having all of those things which a society requires to flourish and to come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, instead you destroy all of that so that it's a daily threat of a car bomb in front of a school. It's a daily threat that people will come up and shoot up a bus full of girls. It's a daily threat that your children can't even go uh, to, to the hospital safely or anywhere, or just even to buy groceries and the struggles and strife that comes with this. This comes from, the, these are the thamarat of rebellion. These are the fruits of rebellion in that they're, all, they're sour fruits and they're bitter fruits and they're fruits that have no benefit because they are rotten full of decay and full of destruction and full of bloodshed and things that destroy the Muslims. And this is what Imam Muqbil rahmatullahi was referring to in this point. And there are so many countless uh, examples throughout history. So the waqi' that uh, illustrates this for us, as well as the text, going back through the text, 
uh, of uh, the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the understanding of the Salaf, and those examples throughout Muslim history, where we find people, uh, because there was a lot of bloodshed and there has been a lot of bloodshed and probably will continue to be a lot of bloodshed, unfortunately, Allah musta'an, and we'll find we find that groups like the Khawarij and other groups, and 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 when there is re rebels and there's a distinction between rebels and it's going to be the Khawarij, but this is not the place to distinguish that what we've talked about in our drus, meaning that the Khawarij they hold the aqidah of rebellion and of of of, of uh, taking people out of the fold of Islam, making takfir of people for the major sins. Whereas the rebels, maybe it's a political motive; they want to overthrow the authority. But ala kulli hal is all of these are madhmoon, all of these are destructive, all of these cause wickedness and bloodshed and spread those, uh, that instability in the land of the Muslims and Ahl sunnah detest it. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.